Throughout 2014, AJ Lee and a new on the scene page feuded over the Divas title, trading it back and forth and having matches for the belt multiple times on pay per view. It was a shining light in a women's division which at the time were just not being given time or being taken seriously by the WWE. But just a year later, AJ Lee was retired. She was one of the top women in the company, but one day it was simply just announced on WWE.com that she was retired. So, what happened? Today we're going to be talking about AJ Lee and what led to her early retirement, as well as what she's doing now. Make sure to like and subscribe, I'll give you until the three count. Rachel Rose, oh, the leg! There it is! I hope you beat the count, and let's get into the video. In March of 2007, April Jeanette Mendez enrolled in a wrestling school close to her home in New Jersey, which was being operated by Jay Lethal, and she began to perform on the New Jersey independent scene around late 2007, the same year she started training, and began wrestling on the indies around the area. She wrestled for Women Superstars Uncensored, where she was a former tag team champion there, and her and Jay Lethal also won the annual WSU slash National Wrestling Superstars King and Queen of the Ring tournament. In May of 2007, in 2009, she would leave WSU after she signed with the WWE, relinquishing her championship as a result. April Jeanette Mendez reported to what was WWE's developmental territory at the time, Flora the Championship Wrestling. Ain't that nostalgic? And she first debuted under the ring name of April Lee. But not too long after, her name was changed to AJ Lee, what we know her as for pretty much the rest of her career. And AJ Lee had quite a successful run in FCW. She was the FCW Divas Championship once, as well as the Queen of FCW Champion once. And she would get her first national TV exposure when she would go on the third season season of NXT back when it was that really weird reality show and this was season 3 where it was the all women season. She was actually pretty popular on this season of NXT, she kind of played into her nerd fandom and all that and it ended up helping to get her to place third, 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 not first unfortunately. But lo and behold, five months later, she would get called up to the main roster anyway as part of a tag team with the NXT winner, Caitlyn, referring to themselves as the Chick Busters. And yeah, they were just a complete jobber team. They mainly appeared as jobbers on SmackDown, or they'd appear on NXT Redemption, which is when the NXT game show season just became never-ending, and it was the worst weekly show in history. Definitely a video on that will be needed. In November 2011, though, AJ was placed in an on-screen relationship with Daniel Bryan, and this would end up being the turning point of her career. Daniel Bryan won the World Heavyweight Championship next month, and AJ and their relationship would become a big part of Bryan's character, and she was a focal point of Daniel Bryan's title reign. I mean, the whole thing ended because of her. At WrestleMania that year, Daniel Bryan was defeated in 18 seconds by Sheamus. The match started, him and AJ kissed, he turned around into a bro kick, and that was the entire match at WrestleMania. Bryan ended up breaking up with AJ on screen, blaming his loss of the title on her, and this caused AJ to go into her mentally unstable, crazy character that again really shaped her career, and she would actually become involved with Daniel Bryan again on screen in a relationship and also CM Punk, and also Kane, who were all feuding over the WWE Championship. Yes, AJ Lee had gone from being a, a jobber women's tag team to six months later being a big focus in the world title feuds, in two world title feuds. Daniel Bryan would propose to AJ on screen and AJ would accept and we had a wedding going for Raw 1000, but it turned out that AJ hadn't actually said yes to the wedding, she had said yes to being the new GM of Monday Night Raw, and she left Brian at the altar. So yeah, AJ Lee now was a weekly on-screen authority figure character. She was on TV all the time, getting so much exposure, and she was easily the most popular women's wrestler in the company, despite the fact that she wasn't even really wrestling that much, or wasn't portrayed as in the main event or around the title picture in the women's division. Truth be told, AJ Lee didn't really do too much as the Raw GM it ended up not really suiting her, and she would then become involved with John Cena on screen. But this didn't last for too long either, because AJ Lee would ditch John Cena to get with Dolph Ziggler. 
AJ Lee turned heel, got into a relationship on screen with Dolph Ziggler, and eventually they were joined by Big E as the muscle of the trio, and this was easily the prime years for AJ Lee as a heel character. This trio were absolutely awesome. When Dolph Ziggler cashed in his Money in the Bank contract to win the world title on the Raw after WrestleMania 29 in 2013, AJ Lee was right there with him, and it was the next month at Payback 2013 that AJ Lee challenged her old partner the Caitlyn for the Divas Championship and she would win her first title in WWE. AJ Lee and Dolph Ziggler would eventually split after AJ Lee cost Dolph Ziggler winning back the world title inadvertently. But AJ would continue on solo, or not solo, she had Tamina by her side, but you know what I mean, and she was the top star of the women's division. She would continue on as Divas Champion and would hold the title for 295 days, beating the likes of the Bella Twins and Natalia to retain the title. On April 7th, 2014 though, on the Raw after WrestleMania 30, she would lose the title to Paige, the debuting Paige, who was being called up for the main roster that night, challenged her for the title, and won it. AJ Lee's reign had lasted 295 days. It was at the time the longest Divas title reign of all time. She would be off TV following this, but she would return on the June 30th, 2014 Raw, just two and a half months later, to win the Divas title back from Paige. AJ Lee was now full babyface as her and Paige would feud throughout 2014, with them trading the Divas title back and forth, but the feud between herself and Paige would end with AJ Lee as the Divas Champion, now a three-time Divas Champion, but she would lose the title to Nikki Bella at Survivor Series 2014. She took some time off TV once again and returned in time for WrestleMania season to team up with Paige to take on the Bella Twins at WrestleMania, a match that they won. One. The next night on the Raw after WrestleMania, herself, Paige, and Naomi teamed up to defeat the Bella Twins and Natalia in what ended up being her final ever match. Yeah, WWE.com went on to announce that this was actually her final ever wrestling match, or just announcing that she had retired from in-ring competition. It was announced only a couple days later, no one knew before the match had started, and yeah, that was her final match. So why did she retire so early? Well, the main story that everyone seems to remember or go off of was because of CM Punk and the whole stuff surrounding his exit from WWE. You see, AJ Lee and CM Punk were married. They were a real-life couple, or they still are married. They still are a real-life couple. At the time AJ Lee exited the company, CM Punk had walked out over a year and a half ago. And the controversy between the two parties was still ongoing, you know, with all the lawsuits, the podcast segments. So everyone just assumes that AJ left because of all the awkwardness surrounding both sides. AJ Lee does cite this as one of the reasons why she did decide to leave, and she also cited in her memoir that permanent damage to her cervical spine and the fulfillment of her goals led to the decision. It seemed as though AJ Lee was going to be done with wrestling, but after CM Punk returned to wrestling by debuting for All Elite Wrestling, many fans had hoped that maybe AJ Lee could follow suit and also return to wrestling, and she would make a return to wrestling, Kind of, because in October 2021, it was announced that she had joined WOW Women of Wrestling as an executive producer. And since September of 2022, she has also been a color commentator for WOW's weekly TV show. So if you want to see AJ Lee involved in wrestling again, I guess get watching WOW. Comment down below if AJ Lee should go to WWE or AEW.